This is Mr. Von Newman. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to trace the clades that an organism belongs to through the one zoom cladogram, which is an attempt to have a cladogram of all life on Earth. It currently has about 2.2 million branches on it, 2.2 million species, each branch being a, a genus and a species. They don't seem to be having um, subspecies and varieties. And it seems like things that are extinct are also not on here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick an example and show you some tools that I use to figure out what it belongs to and how to navigate through here and find it. If you're one of my students working on my tracing the clades assignment, you're going to pick two organisms and you need to be able to start from here and work your way all the way through the clades, telling me at least five or seven, five, six or seven of the clades as you go through them and navigating to your individual organism. To do it, it takes practice because even for me, this gets really overwhelming with so many branches. It's it's definitely a challenge. I think I practiced about three times on this one. So it'll probably take you 10, 15 minutes of practice to be able to navigate back without any training wheels here. By training wheels, this advanced feature right here, this advanced search, gives you a very cool tool. I call it the training wheels. It's a tracer. I'm going to do chicken, for example, here, the red jungle fowl. It lays down that blue trace. It takes you in right to the branch. As you can see, it gets into a lot of branches and just it can it has a, a nesting where each little branch takes you in deeper and deeper. Um, so it's quite a few branches to get to the ultimate red jungle fowl here, which is going to be the closest you can get to a chicken. Gaius Gaius domesticus would be domestic chicken, but this is the red jungle fowl from Asia that is the ancestor to modern domestic chickens. And like I said, you don't see any of these varieties or subspecies on here. It just kind of terminates here. So again, this blue line is going to take you all the way back. I call this tracer like the little training wheels because it makes it easy to not get lost and find your way back. This compass icon right here, also very helpful, shows you all the clades that you've passed through and that this organism belongs to in order to reach this current location on the cladogram. So it's a tetrapod, a four-limbed creature. It's got an amniotic sac for the egg. It's an aminotis. So it tells you each of these clades. Useful, but you might not want to write down every single one of those. As I back out, I'm going to pay attention to many of these, but I may not need all of these to find my way, nor will you. So if you're doing this for me, probably about five to seven of those clades will be important for you. So I'm going to start backing out. If you just click it, when you press the negative, it'll start backing a lot. If you press, if you click, it'll stop it. I'm going to pay attention to that right there. And I wrote that down that this branch right here is going to have 13 species and it branched off from the common ancestor about 11 million years ago. MA would be million, million ago. I'm going to keep zooming out. But I did write that down. I also wrote this one down because when you start getting into these smaller speciation events and these smaller branches, it gets a little tricky to find. So I wrote down the 18.1 million years ago when these branched off. And then I'm going to zoom out more, start looking for some names to clades. So here's the pheasants, the quails, and the guinea fowl. Worth writing down. Zooming out more. Paused it. The neonaths. So I'm going to pay attention that that, everything in this clade, this branch and all these other branches are all neonaths. But this is an important one to mark down and then basically take that branch at the neonaths. Birds. Everything from here is going to be birds. 
that's a clear one that you definitely would want to pay attention to. And then if we zoom out a little bit more, the sorophysids, that's one that I wrote down because that's an important branch that takes me into the birds. But it is a common ancestor to all these other reptiles as well. And then amni amniotes, I wrote that one down. That would be the common ancestor to everything with amniotic sacs. Tetrapods was another one I paid attention to, wrote down, and zoom out more. Vertebrata is another one I wrote down and paid attention to, and that should pretty much get you also animals. Nephrozoa, I wrote down, that's an important clade to pay attention to. Zooming out some more. Get animals. So that is the last big clade. Oh, also eukaryotes, but that's pretty, pretty obvious. But so eukaryotes, and then animals, and then going in further into the cladogram. So this pretty much will back me out just about to the end here. And there we go. That's the, so those were, those were the tools I used to get my bearings and to train myself to learn and practice. I could then go through here and practice again using the trace, the blue trace, which would be a good idea, but for time here, I'm not going to do that. Right now, I'm going to show you attempting to do it without the tracer. So if you're doing this for my, for my assignment, ultimately, you're going to delete that trace, and you're going to work your way through the clades that you just learned about. So we're going to go into the U, eukaryotes, double-click on it to zoom in. We're going to get into the animals. Keep double clicking to zoom in more. I'm looking for the nephrozoa was one of the clades that I was looking for. So I'm going to take that and branch off over here. And zoom in some more by double clicking. And then vertebrata was one that I was paying attention to. Tetrapods, amenotes, and the sorophysids is going to be where I branch off into the birds, turtles and crocodiles, ultimately just trying to get to the birds. And then I jotted down that it was going to be a neonath. So I'm going to branch off there. And then beyond that, there's no more named clades. I'm paying attention. I'm looking for the 18.1 million years ago and the 101 species, which is right there. So like I said, at a certain point, trying to find that little branch, it's not really going to be a name. It's going to be that. And then the other little branch I was looking for was the uh, 11 million years ago branch. Eleven million years ago, and it was nine species. Let's see. 
but somewhere in this branch, close. And at this point, if I needed to cheat and refresh myself on where it was, I could lay a trace to it, just like I did previously. There's all the quail. Looking for the jungle fowl. And yeah, I was in that branch right there. It was this branch that I needed. So yeah, when you get down to these little branches, it can get a little, little tricky. There it is. So 11 million years ago, the 13 species. And there is... The red jungle fowl, gaius gaius. So quite the cladogram, quite the tree of life to navigate through. It's a great tool. Use the tracer, use the compass, practice, and you'll have no problem being able to navigate. Well, I wouldn't say no problem. It takes practice, and sometimes if you just barely take the wrong branch, you'll have a little bit of problems, but work at it. You'll be able to get it, no problem, and start to understand this tree of life a little bit better. And I hope you enjoy exploring. Have fun.